Okay. So one thing we talked about, hello everybody, yo, yo. Uh, one thing um, in our last assignment that we talked about uh, trying to do, um, or at least I talked about it, um, is we, we talked about sort of organization and uh, both naming and uh, layers, okay? Um, and for the most part, it was kind of a mixed, you know, it was, it was a bit of mixed, you know, some things weren't named and some things weren't uh, uh, layered, but that's cool. It doesn't, you know, like, we'll just go over it real quick again. So, um, so late, you know, we, we, you know, every object has a, a randomly, not randomly, I should, uh, a, an assigned name when it's created, you know, like a sphere is going to obviously in the attribute editor be called a sphere, you know, polysphere, whatever. Okay. But as you go on and you get ob or scenes with, you know, hundreds of objects in them, obviously, you, you know, that's not going to cut it, you know, like which polysphere and all that stuff. So naming objects is really simple. Y your outliner is pretty much the easiest way to make sure that you're naming the object because e each tab here in the attribute editor that we've seen before, you know, all these, all these little bits and pieces, um, you know, you can, you can rename all these all you want, but there's only one real node that like is the actual, that, that will carry the name forward. Okay. Because Maya has all these things, uh, uh, these nodes in here, that's, that's what they, you know, they're actually called nodes, but they're sh shown here as tabs or whatever. And they connect to the object to sort of uh, describe the object and what should happen to the object and all that stuff, right? But, um, like I said, uh, attribute editor at the root just shows you the name of the, the, the actual main root of the object, right? So, you know, if I call this Apple 01, you, you'll see over here that it's now, now my shape tab is called apple o apple zero shape one um but the the main root is here's apple one okay uh, that doesn't change because that's the thing that made it and blah 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 blah. so this is where you name objects and like i said it, it's just it's really you'll see as you get you know 50 bolts in a scene you're going to want to name them bolts one through 50 not cube one through 50 and 50 more other cubes and all that stuff so it's just good practice to uh, label and name or uh, label and number things you know just if you start out with one if I oops if I create a duplicate it's gonna you know automatically call it apple or apple o2 whereas if I you know just called it apple I'm gonna have apple and then I'm gonna have apple o1 or whatever so it's like I said it's just a good thing to do and it's something we want to keep doing as we put these projects together and then the layers tab um, comes along with the um, the channel box, which is that simplified view of all of the uh, you know all, uh, the, the the stack of modifying the object with the the translate and everything up at the top here that that's basically mirrored right here. You, know, you can see these two numbers are changing because they're this this oops you know this is the same as this this contains most of the same things it's just sort of in a simplified form in here so that you can save space okay um but your layers are down here and creating them is just one two three layer one two three selecting your object right clicking add selected object layer two add selected object and you can just uh, and you just double click apple oops apple a P P L E O one. Hey, yeah. So uh, okay, so so is there a way you can pretty much start the layer like uh, like when you have an object in the one certain layer, is there a way you can mark that layer so you can't mess with that object? Yeah, that's what these that's what these other pieces are for. These other okay, yeah. remember the remember these the little yeah, these switches over here, like that's a template, call a template layer, so you can't touch it, but it's like a ghost. And a reference layer is kind of the same idea, except it's shaded, so the the apple. Okay. I didn't know. All right, so that was kind of a hard time to figure that out. Let me see. What did I do? Oh. Yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, you can't, you actually can't name uh, a layer the same thing as, uh, as a... Uh, already existing object that's right because it's, it's another node so this is the kind of things you run into in Maya so I guess I'd have to call this 
apples also. There we go. So yeah, so that's what that is. Um, that's, this is a, a normal, when it's off, uh, wireframe reference, and then reference as a te uh, template, or no, sorry, reference as a shaded object, okay? So yeah, so like, you know, it, 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 it keeps clutter down, it keeps, you know, keeps organization good and, and or keeps, keeps you organized and uh, saves a lot of headache basically down the road where when you're wonder, wondering what the heck stuff is or, you know, whatever. And also, you know, when we talked about keeping objects, uh, keeping versions of objects, obviously that's a good place to stash those versions of objects, you know, keeping them in the scene but not, you know, having them hidden so you don't have to look at them, you know, so you can easily, you know, you can, any, any way you like to organize, unless somebody's telling you, you know, you can do, you can say, you know, like, you know, construction splines, whatever, you know, and there you go. So you could put them all there so that you know that they're, that they're there. However you like to organize yourself, it just, it just saves a lot of time. Okay. Um, one thing I saw a bit of too is, um, People it, like there's lots of people using um, primitives in a really good way, but sort of um, not being not doing sort of the next step that that um, I'll show you. So you know we talked about um, you know when you go to make an object, trying to find the simplest object that you can to sort of get you started, so that you don't uh, you know you have to make it. You know if you if you know you need a, a perfect dome, you know don't. You know, there's no reason to make a spline and revolve this or anything like this. You can just, you know, cut the cut the top off of a sphere, okay? Um, and this gets you a long way, you know, it, it, because it's perfect, it's nice and smooth. You know, we can we can smooth it down and it's gonna behave really nicely, like so. In fact, you barely even see it. But the the difference is that there's no thickness because we cut it you know we cut it off the top of a sphere you know this this works for anything uh, you know any any of your primitives I, you know you saw like when I cut off the top of a, a a cylinder to get a you know to get good segments of a of a circle or whatever um, so that you know the easiest way to do that is just uh, with uh, our old buddy the modeling tools and the extrude command. Um, just remembering that you want to keep your faces together. Now this isn't, I mean, you, you can get away with this sometimes with just a simple, you know, move and drag and, and thicken like that. But you've also got sort of inside out polygons on the inside. So, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily always work so well, especially if you're looking to try and make something that's sort of perfectly extruded out, okay? Um, that you're not gonna get from this command, well, well, you could because if you went by the component, let's see. Well, I'm just in some. Yeah, no. See, it still wants to do that. Okay, so that's when your extrude command, you know, comes in handy. You keep your faces on. You offset it just the tiniest bit. See, so now I've got thickness. Like if I'm trying to make, you know, any thickness of this, if it needs to be tiny, you know, it can be tiny. But now it's a, you know, it's a true, you know, 3D object that we can do other stuff with because it's got an inside and an outside. Now before we did that, we only had an outside technically because this inside wouldn't shade because this is only one polygon, you see? So I got a hole in it now. Whereas if we go and we extrude that, like, whoa, too much. Uh, oops. Uh, so now, so like I said, now now if I delete it, you know, I've got a hole in it in an object that's three dimensional. So it's a great way to start, but you got to make sure that you do the rest of it and just you know get things extruded and get them get them actually three dimensional to move on with other stuff. Okay, but once again, like that is you know the best way to start is with things that are known perfect. You know, like a good example is you know like using something like uh, a torus here for anything that needs a ring, right? So you could just, so if this, uh, if I took my torus and I rotated it 90 degrees and I said, okay, well, I'm gonna, oops. Sorry, 19, so that, uh, I went back to face, went like this chop that off 
And here, grab these edges. Oh. And started extruding them down. So instead of trying to, you know, make make a spline or something like that, that's that's a perfect arc here for this little faucet or something. Um, you know, I'm using what I know is good. This is a good arc because you know it's a primitive and it was made by Maya, so that's nice and clean. Whereas trying to trying to do that yourself, trying to make a perfect arc, is uh, you know really tough. So you really want to lean on your primitives. You know, try and try and think of what you can, where you can start, and sort of chop something out of to to get you started. You know, um, don't forget there's a lot of other ones in here that are uh, actually pretty nice. We were talking about. Um, threads last week and um Maya does that through um not through splines but a primitive called a helix so it's like if you needed to make um threads on something this will you know this will at least get you started it's not um you know like you could make a you could make a screw out of this if these were sort of like this and you let's see coiled it more times and you know you'd have to sort of tear out some of the extra pieces you know, like the inside faces, but you could tear those out and, and so, you know, sew the insides together and, you know, you've got a good start. I would also, uh, I dump down the, ooh, dump down the detail on that so that when you smooth it out, but you see, you know, like I said, how, you know, how would you make this otherwise? You know, trying, trying to hand make a, a, a perfect helix coil like this would be, uh, next to impossible. Um, at least not accurately, you know, so like i said the this the idea here is just you know keep keep looking at your primitives and, and what you can tear out of your primitives to get you started at, at least on things that need to be uh exact okay so uh yeah like i said make make sure you explore the other poly polygon primitives that are in here because some of them are uh some of them are pretty cool uh we ran through you know some of the easy or the simple ones but you know sometimes you need a gear I don't know how often you need a soccer ball, like we said. Um, platonic solid is another thing that's kind of interesting because it'll give you different, uh, you know, different faces depending on uh, like number of faces. Like it actually starts out like kind of a diamond thing, but it's it's another way to make a um, a sphere that doesn't have poles. When you make a sphere this way, you get a sphere what's called uh, with, with with what's called poles, and obviously there's a lot more detail up here. You know, there's more points, whereas you get out here. You know, the spans are bigger and everything. So if this was something you were sculpting now, uh, so if we went into, oops, I was going to that. And we turned on, um, I, I turned on the uh, soft selection tool with B, the me, you know. So you, you see what's going on here is that, you know, in here, you're going to get weird pointy extrusions and, you know, like, this is odd, and you know. Whereas, if you see, you see this doesn't uh, the, the platonic solid. Uh, some places call this a G, or uh, some software calls this a geosphere. Um, so, the, at no point is it any denser than any other, right? So, if I went and I needed this, needed to pull on this, or you know, whatever. If, uh, these these are good for if you have to put them through uh, a uh, deformer that we'll get into, or anything like that. You, you know that. Like I said, there's no no more detail and no less detail in any any one spot. So this still, whereas this looks funky and will continue to look funky, this will, you know, it'll smooth nicely. You know, that, that smooths okay, but you can see, like I said, you've got a weird pole here. And um, if I turn this off, there's a weird, you see the shading, weird shading stuff that's going on here. You know, none of that's happening here. It's all just a a nice looking schmoo of some sort okay so um like i said experiment with the other uh you know put, um, polygon primitives and just you know get to know them because there's a lot of uh there's a lot more besides spheres and and cones and cylinders and stuff okay so with that said um, so um, there's a few more things that I wanted to talk about with subdivision services that we uh, didn't um, talk about last week. Uh, just a few things to sort of make life a little easier. Um, so we talked about one, two, three on the keyboard, okay? One being whatever the original shape is, two being um, the shape, 
with a um, with its original shape still shown, but the the smooth version underneath, which which is cool. Okay, so you you get the cage, but you also get the um, the smooth version. This you know this is a, a nice way to work. Um, but uh, another thing that you can do, uh, so if, yeah, so three is three is fully shaded. Three is shaded with the cage. One is the cage, the you know the the basic cage or basic mesh for um, for any subdivision. Okay. So um, I'm just going to continue on down the keyboard because it's not anything we've talked about. But now it's kind of a good time to start talking about it. Is um, so if you keep going down your numbers, uh, you know one, one, two, three is you know what we just talked about. Now the uh, the rest of the numbers give you something else. Now four is is, is wireframe, um, and it's exactly what you think you're seeing through the object, but you're still seeing the edges, um, and you're still seeing all the points. Okay, this is a nice uh, where this comes in handy. Um, obviously, is just to see if objects are inside of each other or anything like that, but. Um, Another thing that's great about this is that it ignores, like if you have camera based selection and you're at, you're shaded, and this is the one we talked about where you don't accident, like now I just selected these, but I didn't shoot through my object and selected these, so, or I didn't select those. Jeez. Um, th um, th wireframe ignores that. So, oh, not in Maya. Never mind. Most programs ignore uh, uh, ignore that when, huh? I thought it did. Never mind. Um, that's not true. So it's just a way to see through your object. Sorry. Five is uh, shaded, um, and then if you keep going, you just get different modes that um, right now won't do anything because, um, like, um, you know, five is just 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 sim simple shade. And it's actually telling you shaded display. Uh, you go to six shaded dispute uh, display with texture maps. When objects have uh, maps on them, you know, this would make them show up. You know, if you had, you know, whatever, uh, an image on this object, it would show up. Um, shaded display. Um, so this is one where if you have lights in your scene, which we'll, you know, which we'll get into later, it'll show those. It's just a way to sort of see different, um, you know, see your see your models in a different way. Where you know, like, because sometimes, like, if you have a um, if you have a, a model that's completely black and you're trying to see where your points are, you know, it, and that's that's what you would get when you when you've got shaded and texture maps on. It's going to disappear. So if you if you pop down to just shaded display view, you're just going to get it gray so you can see it. It's still going to render with your texture map on, but it, it's going to show it to you this way. Okay, so. Four or five. That also works on the keyboard on the side or the keypad on the side here. Okay. All right. Then the next thing I want to show you is um, a quick key for um, increasing and decreasing the uh, subdivision that's going on on your object. Okay. So when you put it on, if you if you hit page down and page up, it'll subdivide it another level. So I just turned it all the way to zero. So it's, you know, there's that, there's no difference between my non-smooth and my smooth object. If I page up, that's one division. Okay. And you can see how it's still pretty rough because the default is two. You're going to get two out of any object by default, unless you change it in the preferences. There's two and then three, if I, if you have, if you really want to see it really smooth and you can keep going, you're just going to eventually run out of memory in here. Cause remember it's quadrupling every time. So if you, if you see right here, I got 3,400 faces, 13,000. Now it's getting, now there's a limit. It's like five, five division, uh, five, uh, five smooths. So if you, if your object is starting to get big and bogged down, you can you can bop down a level and it'll, you'll get your interactivity back, but you'll still be able to sort of see what you're doing. So things you can keep you know moving things and sculpting things around. But keep in mind, once again, this is just showing it to you. It's not you know it's not making any changes to the underlying stuff because we can turn off and go back to this is our this is our actual mesh. This is our mesh when we go to render time. Okay. It was just a quick way to, to not have to peel through the menus because the you know they're like in here you'd have to dig down in here to do it otherwise by hand so it's just a quick way to go okay 
And um, another cool uh, subdivision um, tool is uh, called a proxy mesh. And what that does, it kind of, I mean, it, it, it all depends on which way you like to work. Like some people really like when you hit uh, oh, number two on your keyboard. And like I said, you're seeing, you know, you're seeing the mesh around the object. So you're seeing the effect underneath smooth, but you know, you don't have to, oops, you don't have to, um, you know, you get best of both worlds. You see the smooth object and you see the original cage. Um, but another thing that you can do, um, is called a uh, smooth uh, uh, subdivision proxy, right? And what that is is, is essentially it's a, it's almost like an instance, except it's going to be uh, subdivided. So you can have objects next to each other, um, or I mean, by default they're on top of each other, but it, you can move them away from each other. So you can sculpt over here or or, or make changes, but see the sort of uh, the 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 effect next to it, or like I said, on top of it, really. So if you go to um, subdivision proxy, I'm going to hit reset here. So you can say how many subdivisions you want to do. Um, by default, it makes a, a object that's transparent. And uh, I don't really like that. But I, so I keep the I like to keep the uh, the shader that's on it, meaning it'll also the, the, the other version will be gray. Um, so I'm going to subdivide twice. Um, most of the stuff you don't have to mess with. Uh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's fine. That's fine. That's uh, no. You don't want that renderer. So boot. So oops. Okay. There we go. So if I go in here, you'll see what I got out of that is an object that you know is, is subdivided, but still related to this one. So if you don't like the way that you know when they're on top of each other like that. See, I make a change here, it changes over there, but it's also subdivided. So you could, like I said, you could put this over here, mess with this one, you know, with all the normal tools that you would like to mess with. Uh, where am I? You know, you can cut new, you can cut new edges. You know, as soon as I say I'm all done here. See, boom, I got a sharpened edge over there. I can I can go back to face mode and punch holes. Like I said, it's all about, you know, how how you like to work. If 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 this is a you know, like if you were working on something that was very organic and you wanted to see the, you know, you want to see it without lines on top of it like this or anything, you know, if you really are just sort of working on it as a shape, then this might be a cool way to go because it uh you know, like I said, it's showing you, you know, exactly what you're going to get, but another copy. So when you're done with that, you can just, you know, just bop that guy out of there because it's because you'll get the same thing out of this guy when you're when you smooth it. So it's just like a kind of a it's like a, an aid, a, a tool for when you're you're doing this kind of stuff. OK, so, yeah. OK, I'll keep that. Um, Okay, so now we're gonna move into um, sort of one of the, probably some of the last stuff about modeling, um, and this is where it actually starts to overlap animation. So it's kind of fun, um, and they're uh, they're kept in the modeling. Uh, you'll actually find them both in animation and modeling, and they're called deformers. I don't know if you if you went through all the menus here, all six thousand of them. Uh, one of them's deformers here, right? So deformers, like I said, they overlap with um, animation because the things that they do to objects, um, you know, can be done at render time, or sorry, at animation time, or they can just be used to help you make objects, okay? Uh, depending on, you know, your, whatever, whatever, whatever you might need, okay? So I'm gonna go over some of the, the basic ones. There's a lot of other ones that are more, um, specialized but I'm gonna go through some of the main ones sadly that a lot of the main ones that that you need are, are hidden in a directory called or a, um, a menu called nonlinear okay so I'll go through some of these other ones quickly later but I just want to show you these ones now because um, they're cool okay so um, so first up so we have Ben flare sign squash twist and wave okay um, and 
a lot of them share some of the uh, same settings or uh, yeah some of the same settings and how they operate and some of them are completely different but um, so if I go in here um, and I'm gonna do a bend on this object I'm gonna go back or you know what uh, let me start over I'm gonna give myself a cube so okay so I got my cube okay um, and the thing to remember about um, uh, deformers is that by default they're 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 independent uh, you know how how some things that we some operations we do on polygons they um, you know they're obviously tied to the object when we extrude and we do this you know we do this we do that we extrude we 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 rotate it whatever it might be you know it's it's tied obviously to the objects because you're working on the polygons um, deformers are not that way okay which is both sort of good and bad um, and I'll show you what I mean so if I say create bend what it's gonna do is come in here and it's gonna make a bend object see this is my bend object super descriptive just tells you everything you need to know that little line <laughs> it's a joke it's Okay. Anyways, um, but but you'll see if you start messing with it, you'll get uh, you'll get stuff out of it. And what what all this is telling you is so um, for a bend, you have what they call a low bound and a and a high bound. Okay, and what they're talking about is from the center, how literally high, how high should this be, or how low should this be, and how high should it be, and it'll make sense when I mess mess with it. So I'm gonna um, turn off my low bound to zero so now I have a stick that you know only goes up from its its pivot point okay I'm gonna up it a little bit and then I'm gonna put a curve on it okay so you see what it's doing is it's you know as you might imagine it's bending my the box right because I at, when I was when I had when I invoked bend I had my box selected here right so it made uh, a bend gizmo that's you know as high as it was and, and, and you know it, it was actually centered that's why it was invisible so what I was talking about earlier or a minute ago is that like I said these are independent and the way and whatever you do with them and where you put them is gonna make a difference in the object okay so for instance if all I wanted was to take this this box and curl it over you know 45 degrees I type in 45 degrees here and then I would line this up in fact I'll even snap it to this point on the object okay now if I there we go so that's bending the object you know it, so if you're looking for something exact it'll do things that are exact so that's you know 45 degree bend in this object and if I went back and I looked it up you know, actually, my the box is probably two, two uh, units high, whatever the millimeters I'm in, or whatever. Okay, so that's giving me an exact 45 degree bend from the from the bottom here because that's where I snap the gizmo to. You see right there. Okay. Whereas, you know, if I keep messing with it, you're going to get you know a bunch of different things. So it's bending starting here, out here, everything up. Okay, so if I do that, if I go, you know, 90 degrees, it's going to bend it completely over, uh, you know, whatever. So, so like I said, the key here is is sort of what, what you're looking to get out of it. The great thing about it is, you know, if you wanted to just sort of, uh, let me turn my snap off. If I just wanted to put a little tweak at the top here, if I move this, damn it, there we go. If I move this, oops, oops, wrong object. If I move this up, up, so the bend is going to start where where the, the the base of the bend is. Okay, so you can you you put it where you need it. So it's like if you wanted to, like I said, just just sort of bend this top in in some way, then that's what you, there's you know you put it there. If you if you need to bend from the center point, you bend there. Okay, if this is in the wrong direction, you take the gizmo and you you. You, uh, you know, twist it 45 or not? Uh, yeah, 45 degrees. So, so, wait, so like that. So, oops, no, sorry, 90 degrees. 90 degrees. 
okay? So you see actually how the, the two things are separate. Like my in here, I have a bend handle, and then I, have, I still have my poly cube. They're, they're two completely separate objects so that if I wanted to, I could take my, uh, and they have a relationship, and that's why you see that it's purple. But if I, I, I take my bend, and I write, or sorry, I shift click my cube, and I parent it. Now, now I can take it wherever I want it, and do my bend, you know, wherever it needs to be, because now it's it goes along with the object. So, you know, so this is why you could obviously use this for animation because uh, you could, key, you know, I could keyframe. I had a let's see, so I had a uh, example here. A, Pretty simple example, but so if I made a tail on my box here, like so, and I, and I went back to my construction tools, and I did a multi cut. No, connect. So I'm just going to put some divisions in here to give myself something to bend. I'm going to up that. Oops. Up it. By, I'm holding down my middle mouse button, and that's adding more divisions. So it's, it's a square tail, but it's a tail nonetheless. So if I went and I grabbed these faces that are on the end here, like so, and grew that selection out, so this works on you know whole objects obviously, but also uh, just selection. So then if I came and I added a bend onto this, now see it's putting it up and down, so I, I have to get it into place because by default here, because it doesn't know you know what you're what you're trying to do here. It just it knows you want to put a bend in the scene essentially, and it's just helping you um, you know get that together. So there's the bend handle. So if I do it now, obviously I get a weird you know I get something like this. But if I take it and I, I usually turn the low bound completely off because usually you're just trying to bend something um, in one direction. So low bound, uh, I usually actually just go, if you go in here, you turn that off and that, so that's acting. So if you leave it on, I'll, I'll just, I'll show you what it does. If you leave it on, oops, one and one, Oop, negative one. Um, what that means is you'll, you'll see if I hit the curvature, See, so it's bending from the bottom and the top, you know, um, which, you know, you, you, I guess you could want if like, you know, let's like a, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So it's, it's bending, it's taking this, this, uh, line and bending it this way and bending from the top. So, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I you, it's rare that you run into this situation. So it's, it's better just to turn that off and just use it as a, a bend. I mean, I think of that more as a curl than a bend. So if you turn low bound off, it's now what I would call a, a, a bend. Okay. So um, then all I got to do is essentially move it into place by taking it. So I'm going to rotate this down 90 degrees. I'm going to move it down here. I'm going to increase how long it gets so that it goes all. Uh, I'll turn the curvature off for now. Then so so you'll see if it if the, the so you can sort of think of this thing as like the sort of little meter stick telling you where the effect is going to happen. Okay, so you know this this extrude must be about two. So I have a little little bit hanging out right there. So now I've got a tail. Right, so you see what I'm saying. Like, obviously, if you just if you put some animation keys in here, you'd have a wagging box, and that's great, you know. Um, whereas, you know, if, if all I was looking for was a 45 degree bend out of this, I'd say, okay, great, 40 negative 45 degrees, you know, and then I would go and if you delete you select your box, you delete your history, right? Oops, object mode delete history now it's permanently there so you know so in that instance i'm just using it to get something done i'm not you know i'm not trying to animate with it or anything like that but there's nothing stopping you from doing that you know like you could you could do that you could leave that there if that's what you're if if, if that's the motion you're trying to get out of an object then awesome then you're you're all set um but 
if it's you know if, if if it's just a modeling aid then you just collapse you just for either you know delete your history here or you know edit delete by type history and that that blows it away okay the other thing to remember is um, there's nothing stopping you from doing uh, multiples okay so if I went back to my face level and you know grabbed grabbed all those guys again okay I could just as easily come in and um, make sure so I'm just gonna turn this off create create another bend but this time I'm gonna um, let's see 90 degrees so I'm gonna make it so that it uh, gives it a curl upwards right so 90 there uh, bend two. okay I'm gonna bring my high bound up but I'm gonna move the object right there and I'm gonna put that back at two just like the other one so you know it's like tail between its legs tail up but if you go back and you select your other bend handle it oop, uh, no that's two. Oh, oh did I grab the wrong one okay oh shit did I grab them both hold on so that's that one Ninety, ninety. Pen handle. Sorry. Hold on. There it is. Okay, so it still wags. Okay, but I also with Ben two, and you can actually name these, so you could call this wag and uh, bend or flex or I don't know. Uh, Twist? No, it's not a twist. I'll just call it flex. Okay, so that so the flex is up and down like this, and wag is the side to side. So they, you know, they both. You know, there's nothing stopping. Like I said, you, you're operating on the same polygons with two with you know. You would actually stack as many of these as you need to. It could twist. It could do anything. Um, so I'm gonna put this one. I'm gonna put the flex back there. Two. Hold on, there it goes. Okay. Okay, so now I've got control over, you know, tail up, tail down, but if I go back, I still have I still have wag. It kind of acts weird when it's this way, but you get the idea. There. Like so. Yeah. So this is essentially creating pathways for the object to kind of move along, or in a way, I mean, it, it it's sort of a it's sort of like a, a an invisible sort of field, you know, pulling and pushing the 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 polygons around is kind of the easiest way to think of it because there's a bunch of different kinds. So it's like even though it's this you know this tiny little uh, line, it. You know they're not connected to it it's more it's like a, a good way to think of it is kind of like a magnet you know it's like a, if it was a bar with a bunch of magnets in it and it and it flexed and things like that it's going to take all this stuff with it you know um so it's it, it's going to deform things you know hence deformers you know like based on what it's sort of tr made to do you know this one just being literally a one direction bend like like so and you you tell you put it where you want it and you set it up the way you want it you know like you you say you know i want it to you know just go in this axis and you know because i could keep going like this and it's going to try and you know like i don't even know there so this is what you get if you keep your low bound on there you know it, it does this so if that's what you're looking for you know a wormy thing or something then that's great it it's just it's literally like a little force field. This one being one that forces things to bend. Does that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So if we just keep going down the the line here, um, I'll sh I'll run you through what the rest of them do. Um, hey, real quick. Yeah. How did you How did you get a separate flex and lag node within the same I guess line? I just renamed them. I, I created bend. Uh, uh, bend. Deformers here and there, you know, by default they're just going to be called Ben. So if I put another one in there, I got now I have Ben three. Okay, they're, they're still really, you know, they'll they'll still be related because because they're related to the or 
uh, let's see, they're assigned to the box. They're still going to show up in this the box or the you know cube cube dog uh, uh, geometry, right? So so they do show up here, but they do still show up as their own objects. Okay, that's why we have you know that's why they're here. So I have these handles, you know, but their effect when you go into cube dog is flex and bent and I just named it. So if I had a third one, I could just call it, you know, big bend for my own usage. And then it would, you know, do do whatever it's gonna do. Okay, I, I guess I thought it was supposed to get renamed in the uh, the outliner too. Uh, no, because the 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 effect that it has on the object is different than the the handle. So the thing it creates is just a handle for your, literally for you to have something to grab onto so that you can move it. You know, like so if I, you know, grabbed, you can, you can rename these if you you know like this one's obviously wait number three is going to be the newest one. So if I click this, you know, you can I can call this, you know, uh, wag handle, you know. Or handle wag would have been better, uh, and I could call the other one the curve one if I can. It's right here. So handle curve. So you know this would help you find them, but the actual effect is here in the object, and I just renamed it that. I just called it that. Okay. All right. So um, like I said, I'll just run through the uh, the rest of them. There, you know. Uh, there's some cool ones in here, and you could do interesting stuff with them. So flare is just uh, um, is a thing to uh, sort of uh, well flare things, I guess. So um, by default, you're gonna get this uh, like sort of coney object, you could say. Okay, um, so I'll just start doing it. And you'll see what it does. So it, you know, it, it does what it says. It flares out or flares in. You know, it's a good way to pinch an object like this, you see, uh, which is cool, or flare out, or, you know. So these, you know, these these guys are sort of related to each other. Or wait, is it this one and this one? Yeah. So, you know, three by three gives you a big old flare out at the bottom, and then this is the top, okay? And so if you want them to be the same, you'd have to type the numbers in. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So it gives me that squish. Um, it can be curved, so you could actually curve it in or even out. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't know exactly what you would do with this. I guess it's got a usage somewhere. I mean, it. Uh, I guess you could kind of like it makes like kind of a nice base sort of for something. Or let's see. If anybody thinks of a good reason for this I mean that you know I, the, I guess the point is is that it you know it's, it's making a nice you know uh, uh, very symmetrical and and you know good looking flare of this type so if you you know if you wanted to do this by hand you know you'd have to sort of guess at these at some of these angles and everything this is a nice clean you know angles situation and keep in mind, you know, it, it's it's uh, you know it's separate. So if if the object is not within its force field, it's not going to do anything. Um, so I inside this sort of uh, virtual little uh, cone, it has you know it has to be inside there, or it's not going to do anything. When it's when it's in there, that's when you're gonna that's when you're gonna get your effect, and that's uh, you know when it's not, you're not you're not okay. That's so kind of fun. I mean, um, you never know when you need something. I guess it's almost like an anvil. Oh, you get the idea. Okay, so uh, same thing. It's it's on its own. Um, when you get to animating, all these you know all these uh, parameters are animatable. So if I you know if, if if that's what I wanted out of this, it, it could do it. It works on faces. It works on um, points. So you know if that, that's a, a sub selection, then that's great. Um, it does not. They don't work with soft selections, which is a bummer. Meaning, um, if you needed this to sort of fade off, um, it doesn't do that, which is a bit of a bummer. But that's what it is. So okay. So um, sign is just sort of a. Um, 
is a deformer that does um, based on kind of like a uh, no based on a, on a sine wave, which is like a you know you can actually see the wave. You see this right here. So if you're looking to let me squish this down maybe a little bit. Oop. No uh, wavelength. So I'm gonna shorten my wavelength. There it goes. So you get that out of it. Okay. So if you move it, the object goes. Woo, 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 woo. If you move the object through it, you get the same same thing. As soon as it passes the um, the deformer, where'd it go? Um, as soon as it passes the deformer, it it stops doing that. So okay, and that's got some options. Lots of options actually. You can play with that till the cows come home, but it, it's not. Uh, I don't think it's super valuable, I, I suppose, but it is what it is. Okay, um, squash is a cool one because uh, what it does is, you know, we've we've played with um, scaling, you know, plenty of times, but you know, like just any object that you know that's real, you know, if I if I did this, you know, some of that some of this has got to go in a different direction. So you know, meaning like if I squash in this direction. The object's got to squish out this way, you know. This material's got to go someplace, right? You can't just squash to zero most objects unless it's, you know, a box or something like that that can do that. But if this was a, you know, piece of jello or something, I couldn't do this without getting it smushing like this out of it. Okay, squash um, sort of solves that or whatever by um, instead of just blindly um, scaling an object, it, it will squish out in the other direction. So if I hit squish or if I pull, see it keeps the volume, but it's now, it also works as a stretch basically. But also if I squish it, see how it's going outwards, like it's melting or whatever, until I get to it being perfectly flat, right? So, ooh, not too far. So yeah, by default, but it goes, like that. So this is handy. You know, it's like when objects. You know, some of the first things you'll learn when, if you you know you go on to the next class is how, you know, how you, you do these bouncing ball exercises where the the ball bounces across the thing. You know, and up here you have it be perfectly, uh, you know, round. Uh, let's, let's go with round, and I'll put a squash on it. You know, it's perfectly round as it as it bounces, but when it hits the floor, it it squashes because it, you know, it deflects a little bit. So it goes like, whoop, wrong way, like that, you know? So it goes, uh, it may work like this. So, you know, it goes like this and then hits the floor, bounce, boing, boing, you get the idea. Um, so if this was traveling along with it, you could, you know, if you put this on like a character with a belly or something, you could actually kind of bloop it out and stuff like that. There are there are better th ways to do that in here, but, but you know, that's kind of the basic uh, concept of, uh, of this guy and it's it's kind of a handy one so one of your uh, more handy ones definitely uh, in making you know real world objects are is twist um, as you might imagine uh, twist will get you all kinds of uh, cool stuff um, for instance just a really quick simple example is uh, if I make a cylinder uh, with a radius of one but a height of 30 and a lot of subdivisions up and down, but only 12 in this in the around. But I need lots of material here to, to twist. Say I create a couple of duplicates. Duplicate, duplicate. I take all three of these guys and I mesh. Combine those, now it's one object. If I come in here and I do a twist, You know, you're going to get cable out of it, or yarn, or rope, or whatever. Um, obviously, lots of you know, lots of things are, are twisted in this way. So if I made a whole whole bunch of this, it and then it looks pretty good. They're not quite close enough. Let's see. Where's my top? Oh, see. Oh well. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, twist. You know, tw twist comes in handy for a million things. Uh, uh, you know, ropes, uh, 
anything that's braided or twisted around or not actually braided but sort of twisted around each other um yeah there's um lots of, you, you, i mean you run into it when you run into it uh, i think i killed my twist handle there it goes so it, it works just like the others in that um, it has a low bound and a high bound where, but uh, and the effect starts from the center. It, it you know by default it starts in the center. You could you could make that not happen. So if I turn that off and I did a twist, oops, but I put it back in the middle of the object like so. There we go. So it's just starting starting here, but not going in the negative direction. Whereas if I turn that on, it's gonna going to go in the negative. Does the whole negative uh, positive make sense? It's, it's, it's about the pivot point of the deformer. That's the, the main thing to remember here is it's just when it creates it, there's, oops, can't get away with that. There. Okay. Yeah. So, so when it creates this guy, it here's your center. This is positive and that's what it means by uh, high bound. So this is its high bound one, and this is its low bound negative one. So that means it, it, it's saying negative one because it's it's below this line. Okay. So if I kill e either of these, you see now nothing in the negative, everything in the positive. Okay. And it's it's independent unless you parent it. So you know now this is all jacked up, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get it. Really messes it up if you're not right on center. There we go. So you know you could make a. Uh, this would probably make a decent drill bit if you had uh, like the, the the pointy flutes at the end. You could you know get this started and cut out some of these pieces and sew them together, and you'd get a you know you'd have a the main part up here, but you'd have the 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 cutting part down there or whatever you know. So. Uh, and there's nothing stopping me from putting a really high high bound on that. See, it's like so. And it could be just like any of the other ones. It can be animated if it needs to be. Candy that's like that, uh, you know, like uh, can ca uh, candy canes. Because then you could, like, if you did this, but if you made it long enough and you threw a bend in there, okay, like so. And well, it's a bad candy cane, but. They get the idea. Like if this was if this was bigger and and more well thought out and not hastily thrown together, that would do the trick. Um, so yeah, so that's a really cool one. Uh, twist twist is really handy. Um, you know, out of all these, you, you do a lot of bends, flares, and twists. Um, and then once again, don't forget. So either these can stay in here if you'd like, or they can be taken out of here. You know, they can be uh, collapsed with deleting your history. So now it the the, the bend is gone. The twist is gone, and all I'm left with is my my geometry. So if I was trying to permanently make it this way, you just you know make a copy, save your copy just in case you want to retwist it or rebend it or something like that. Then um, delete the history on a copy and move on with your life, um, because now I, I just have the geometry that that's been done to. Okay. So wave is kind of another weird one, but uh, you never know. Um, so I'm gonna make myself just a little plane here with a lot of detail in it. Wave. So it creates, oops, creates a wave of, you can mess with the amplitude and the wavelength. So if you need that for something or other, I mean, I guess you could, I'm not entirely sure what you'd use this for, but uh, it's there. Yeah, water drop in a cup. You could you could get that to feather out um, because you can actually mess with the radius of how you want how far you want to go out. And you can add, this one's got actually a nice preview. If you see here, you can actually see you know what it's doing. Where, where, no matter where your object is, I guess this could you know sign could work for like a a sheet blowing around or something like that. Um, so one one thing that um, that these are that these are good for that I almost forgot about was um, if you put different if you put multiple copies of the same type on them with different wavelengths 
um, between whether it's sine or a, a, a wave like this. Okay, if I go out here, like if I like say I was making a flag, right? If I put this out here, okay, and I animated the not the drop off. No, not the amplitude, not the wavelength. Offset. There we go. So, so that's it. You know, flapping, right? But you know, it's it's really obviously pretty robotic and fake as hell, right? So if you, but if you went in here and you put another one, and maybe rotated it in a couple of different ways, and okay, whoa. That's way too much. And maybe put it over here. Made it bigger. I'm going to dump my wavelength down. Oh, no. No, no, no. Go higher. So if I then. So if I then took that one and then also combined it with motion from this one, so I got you know one doing sort of big motions in one direction, and I had another one doing motion in sort of like this direction. You get something that's a little more, uh, that's a little much. Anyways, the idea is if, if you combine these, you combine different types of this kind of motion, you'll get, uh, something that's a little more organic than just a wave going through an object like so you know so this is kind of my gross movement and then the other one is my smaller waves kind of, oh wrong one okay so okay so those are your your basic what they what they call nonlinear um, deformers like i said keep, keep in mind Keep them in mind for both animation and keep them in mind for modeling. You know, if you're if you say, you know, what I need to do is I, I need to take a sphere, but I need to you know squish it in one direction, or I need it to kind of twist a little bit. You know, when you look at an object, um, you know, just you know, if you play with them and keep them in mind, you say, well, I need a I need a bent I need a bent uh, you know. Like I said, a bent, you know, this object is a bent sphere, so you use those things to kind of get get in get it in a rough place, and then you know, and then like just collapse it, and boom, now you have, you know, if I needed to just add noise to this, I just added, you know, I got a nice wave without having to hand sculpt this or anything, any of that kind of stuff, you know. If, if I needed just to bend this instead of, you know, obviously you would never move all these points in a million years. I just would take a bend, put it here. Take the object. You know, if I was making a sail or something like that, just you know, there you go. I got a nice bend, nice, a decent looking bend on it. So you you know you, you combine these things to get different looks out of stuff. So that's there we go. And you know I could take another one and put it at the top to curl the top up or you know whatever it is you know. So they're worth exploring and getting to know because they'll do things that you don't want to do by hand or next to impossible to do by hand because you know trying to let's you know like that like that arc or not the, the arc's a bad example but uh you know like this like you you wouldn't in a million years try and bend all the you know try and push all these points into place but sure you'd use a bend to get it done or you could use any of these other things you know uh, a wave could put the make this sort of mush down a little bit or something like that okay uh, actually, this would lead nicely into the next one. Now, the next one isn't in in this nonlinear setup, but uh, it's a really handy one, um, and it's called a lattice. Okay, um, they call it a lattice here, but it actually shows up as a FFD, which stands for freeform deformation object. Um, and what that is is it's it's a cage that's created around your object um, in sort of the same way that there's a cage around your uh, subdivision surface object, okay? And by moving the points, you move the underlying geometry, okay? And I'm just, the easiest way is just to do it real quick here. Um, so the default, 
if I reset it, it comes up with two, five, and two for some reason. I don't know. So um, I'm going to just switch to four, four, and four. And that's what it, that's the same way if I make a cube, it's asking me, you know, how many times do I want this? This is a cube that's, you know, three, three, and three or whatever. Okay. So I'm going to say I want four, four, and four divisions. Um, playing with this will will show you what... Uh, you know why you why you want more divisions sometimes and less divisions other times. So I'm just going to hit create. So what I get out of that is uh, this invisible box or not invisible box, but this kg looking thing. Um, and if I go here to lattice point, that'll turn on points and make them movable. And you just grab one. And you see, basically, it treats the underlying geometry almost like kind of like rubber. Okay. So you can re-sculpt. Like what I was thinking here is if this was a, if I was going for a uh, sail here, you know, it would have like some sag in the middle. So I'm going to take all my center ones and pull them down a bit. Or I could take the top ones here and push them this way. So, okay. So instead of, yeah, the, the point of this, this thing is that um, instead of, you know, moving the whole you know moving you know each part of this object i'm sort of making my own force field the way we just you know we talked about force fields you know that that these bend and all that stuff are, are kind of like a force field it's the same kind of concept and that you know this is you can think of this as sort of a magnet that's going to influence everything from here all the way to the probably about the halfway point nope all the way to the next point up here down here and across and everything so is you know, it soft select in vertex mode pretty much in a way yeah it's kind of the same thing yeah the key with the, the thing about this though is that a lot of people will use this for um animation they'll they'll you know it's it's a way to animate sort of a, a bigger outer structure or, or no sorry a, a more dense sort of inner structure Ooh inner structure by moving just less points okay there we go i missed uh that's a great question no it does not like well hold on it's trying Oops. yes it does Great question, thanks. I actually did not know that. Yeah, so it actually works with uh, soft selection, so you can grab, uh, or you can influence more of the outer cage than uh, just the point that you're grabbing. The the you know the easiest way to oh I'm sorry go ahead. It's 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 on it's not in the nonlinears. It's it's still in deform, but it's actually right here. Okay. See that guy? Yeah. yeah. So. The key with this is to, is really to use as few um, as few points as possible, essentially, because the the it, or as few points as you need, I guess, is a better way to put it, right? So if all I'm trying to do is create sag in here in this in this thing, or let me make a new one. This one's getting really ugly. Okay. Okay. If if all I'm trying to do is create sort of a saggy situation in, in this guy. You don't need, you know, by the box that I had around this one, it's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of points, you know, you can see. Whereas if I go come in here and I say lattice and I go just two by two by two, I'll get this really, well, overly simple. Uh, hold on. This is flat, so it's actually creating a weird, uh, let, me, uh, let me bend this real quick. So I'm just gonna bend this so that I get a little bit of, uh, I get more than just um, like a two. I, I got I have a two-dimensional plane here, so it doesn't. It's, it's making a ugly uh, thingy. Uh, making an ugly. Uh, there we go. Okay. Nice. There we go. Boom. There. So I put it on this. Now I have uh, now I have three dimensions because it was flat. You, 
it's a bad example is what I'm getting at. So if I put that on there, you now see I have like a box around it. I did before, it was just a very a flat box, right? So now I don't have any, any um, divisions in between here. So I want at least like three in one of these axes and I should, I can actually bump it up. Pull up one for one set of base. There it is. Okay, so, whoop, no, no, no. So if I put, there we go. I put one. I put one cut right here. This would be sort of the simplest way to, to you know, put some bend in the middle of this thing because I could go into the lattice point, just grab these 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 points. Ooh, turn my that off, and it's nice and smooth, and it boom sags the whole thing down without. Remember down here, I had this massive you know cage with a bunch of stuff around it and had all these points to deal with. So like I said, if with less points. You you get both a better a, a smoother output and um, just easier to to do. There we go, and like so, there so like that. So you know it all depends on what what you you know what you're trying to do. You know if if I needed to put more, if I needed to mess with the middle here, I would come back and I, you know, I grab the grab that guy, and I think it's probably not going to want to mess with it. Yeah, so. I'd, I'd have to remove the see down here it's warning me that I have to remove the tweaks before so since I modified this it doesn't want to change this geometry anymore um, so I'd have to pull those pull the tweaks out of there okay which I'm not gonna do I'll just delete it lattice so I say I say three by three by three so that gets me a cut in each direction I could skip I could definitely skip this middle one because it's not really doing me any good but I got to find out which one it is it's not that one. It's not. Wait. Yeah, that's it. There we go. So now I have a simple, I have a simple cage that I could, I could re-sculpt these like this. But I could also flare in the middles or like this. There. Whatever you're trying to do, I mean, it. It uh, that you know, you, you can dictate how many of these you want, but you want to use as few as possible because obviously, the more you get, the more, uh, you know, the bigger pain in the butt it gets to be moving all these points, you know. So, here we go. So, like I said, this is one that people use for animation a lot still because these points can all be animated. So, uh, people will do, you know, they'll they'll use them for things that need to flex and they need anything they want to sort of sculpt. As animation happens, you know, you could if somebody was wearing a bag that needed to kind of squish and smush. You could you could go in here and just animate how this thing looks and squish it and smush it. You know, all all this stuff could be interactive or, or you know animated over time, and you would you know you you'd get that kind of effect. So it's kind of a way to you know just uh, brutally push things around the way you you want them to be pushed around. You know. So, so yeah, so that one's right there. So I, like I said, I'm not gonna, a lot of these other ones you'll, you'll get in the next one, because like I said, we're really starting to overlap more with some of the animation uh, classes and, you know, and, and a lot of these things are actually about um, uh, character, character animation, like things like blend shapes. That's essentially morphing from object shape to object shape. Um, it's how people do like lip sync and things like that. They, that you know you'll make all the main shapes and you'll you'll animate through them and stuff and you know like I said this is just not something we're going to cover here but just so you know that it's out there um, clusters is another situation that's kind of uh, people use that for um, for character animation because you can grab clusters of of vertexes and then you put a handle on it and they'll all move and it's just a way to not have to grab things and like I said this is all stuff you'll get into when you get into the anime uh, bigger animation courses um, wires the same kind of situation uh, facial animation and stuff no 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 yeah we're not gonna cover most <laughs> some of this other stuff because we just it, it you know it's not something that that we really need to worry ourselves about right now but you know these main ones right here will help you get your models made and and you know it should help uh, uh, yeah get models made and everything without uh, overlapping too far into uh, the animation stuff 
And uh, I totally can't remember if you mentioned this already or not, but are we um, touching sculpting at all this semester? I plan on it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I plan on it. It's on the roadmap. Um, we're, we're getting there. Like we, you know, now that we've started talking about like objects with more and more detail, and how to add more and more detail, that leads you into sculpting. You know, because you need a lot of detail to do that. And um, so we're sort of we're working our way there. You know, it's like we started with really simple objects. Now we're starting to know how to smartly add detail, and then, like I said, that leads you into sculpting because you need a whole shitload of detail to be able to sculpt. But there's ways around that too. So, um, yeah. And uh, so uh, that's let's see. We talked about the way that you can parent these things to other objects. Uh, the the all the um, the uh, either they they you know like I said by default. Don't forget that they're not parented. They're they're just sort of force fields out in out in space, and you know your object can travel through them if you want. If that if that's what you're looking for, um, or it can be attached to it and you know and go ride along with it and be animated um oh i forgot one good example a good example of one of those um i think uh let's see Oops. um a good example of um of a lattice doing something kind of interesting is uh is it's good for the uh animation where something needs to be squished through something else and by that, I mean, um, if you take this, and I'm going to bump this up a little bit, say five, no, say five, say six. So if I take this and I, I sort of, I re-sculpt it into like a funnel shape like this, and I move it down, and I move this down, and I go like this. Okay, and then I take my object, and it will will push. Oops, hold on. I set up my. Fall off. So I put a fall off on there. The object will there, like like squish <laughs> squish through and come out the other end so if you if you sculpt this usually you want to do this actually a sculpt in the middle then it comes out to what it looked like before but you know this is it's a good example where you could, something you could do with it as a you know an animation effector without I don't know why I want to oh shit see that I had non-camera no I had camera uh, selection on so I didn't grab all the points in my freeform deformation. So, um, but anyways, you get the idea. So it, you know, you can force it through stuff. You can make objects conform to other. You know, like if you need some to squish under a doorway, you could you could put this sideways and squish the whole thing down, and then take your object, and you know, it would go in one side and come out the other. You got to make your own sound effects. So, like, you know. Um, so like if I didn't screw this up when I made it, I would have these guys down here, this guy over here, and then so the squish would be along this axis. I don't know. Oh wait, here we go. So it's, it's another one that, that you kind of just need to play with to sort of get the way that it wants to function because, you know, it, as soon as you make any changes to the shape, it's it's going to do some kind of deflection or or, or you know change to it. Um, object mode, like there. See what I mean? You got to get it right now. Where am I? I don't know why it's turning it inside out. I don't know what I did there, but. Like I said, it's just something to play with. Um, the be best use is, is really just sort of making sculptural style changes without actually sculpting, pushing stuff into place just a little bit. But, um, you know, it's it's not a great one for uh, very exacting sort of changes, you know, unless you have something very specific in mind. Because, um, you know, it's, it's a little odd to work with because of the way it squishes and smushes stuff and everything. 
And uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, remember that these are uh, parentable and not parentable. Um, or, you know, they can go along with the object and not go along with the object. Um, try them out. I, I definitely recommend, uh, you know, grabbing some objects and, uh, you know, uh, doing bends on some parts. I would, I would definitely play with twist and bend and possibly flare. Like I said, some of these other ones are a little uh, specific in, in what you might use them for. But, you know, give them a try and then, you know, give give Lattice a, a kick around. Um, see what you see if it would help any of your other objects that you've made or you know any of the other ones that we've been working on um and uh yeah that's basically it we um that's all i really wanted to talk about today um i say kick them around like i said that's about it any questions from anybody